In this lesson, we're going to learn about the hip roof. We'll learn how to cut the hip rafter, the hip jack rafters, the ridge board, and we will learn how to back and bevel and drop the hip rafter. This is the schematic of the hip roof. You can see the length of the building, the width of the building. The run of the building is half of the width, and you can see coming in from each corner or from each side of the building, there is going to be a run. And what a hip roof actually is, is that this is an equal slope hip roof, that the slope on the sides is the same as the slope on the ends. So then what we have is at the end of each ridge board, there's going to be a common rafter that's exactly the same as the one that's on the side of the building. So at the end of the building, there'll be a common rafter, and at the side of the building will be a common rafter, and they will come up and meet at the ridge board, and in between them, there will be a hip rafter. So hip rafter has the same rise as the common rafter, but a different run. In order to calculate the run, we go back to the unit common rafter, and we remember that the run was 12 inches. If we made a square that was 12 inches by 12 inches, ran across the diagonal at 45 degrees, we would get the run, or the unit run, of the hip rafter. And using Pythagoras' theorem, this is 16.97 inches, or 17 inches. And so the run, the unit run of the hip rafter, is 17 inches, in the same way that the unit run of the common rafter is 12 inches. And both of them will have the same unit rise. And that unit rise is denoted by the slope. So if the slope of the building is, let's say, 912, then the unit triangle for the common rafter is 9 and 12, and the hypotenuse is 15. For the hip rafter, the triangle is going to be 9 and 17, and the hypotenuse is going to be 19.21. And these numbers can be found on your framing square, and that's going to be very handy when it comes to calculating the actual length of the hip rafter. This diagram is an unfolding of the hip roof. There is a lot more detail here than we will actually address right now. But what we have in white is the plan view of the hip roof. We can see the ridge board in red. The hip rafter is coming up at a 45 degree angle in black. And then in the tan color is actually the sheathing that sits on top of the roof that's been unfolded. And you can see that the trapezoid that forms the sides of the roof is bigger than the trapezoid in the plan view. So in plan view, have the same base and the same top, but the actual height of the trapezoid is different. The reason being, of course, is that in plan view, the height of that trapezoid that has a red top and a black bottom, that height is actually the run of the building. But the tan colored trapezoid with the same base, the same top, its, its height is actually the unit common rafter, which is the hypotenuse of the unit triangle. And we have the same thing happening at the ends. So just to give you an idea that when you cover a hip roof with plywood, that the plywood is actually going to be greater than if you were covering uh, a flat roof in the same shape. So as the, as the ridge board goes up higher, it takes more and more sheathing to cover the roof. This diagram helps you to see that there are two different triangle, right angle triangles that you can use to find the length of the hip rafter. So the length of the hip rafter can be found by using the run of the hip rafter and the rise of the building. The hypotenuse of that triangle will give you the line length of the hip rafter. The other right angle triangle you can use will have a base equal to the run of the common rafter and it will have a rise equal to or a side equal to the length of the common rafter. In both cases, you're going to get the same length for the hip rafter. And this is because we're now working in three dimensions. No longer two dimensions, we're in three dimensions. And the hip rafter is actually, if you can kind of see this, it's actually the diagonal of a box, going from the bottom corner of a box to the opposite top corner. And that will give you the length of the hip rafter. Now we can actually get a scale version of the length of the hip rafter by using our framing square. Remember that the framing square on the outside, it's um, delineated in twelfths of an inch. So on, on the tongue of the framing square, we put the run of the common rafter. And on the 
blade of the framing square or the body of the blading square, the framing square, will put the length of the common rafter. Then we measure diagonally across and we would get a scale length for the hip rafter. In this diagram you can see that the length of the building and the width of the building and you can see how you would calculate the length of the ridge board. Because at the end of each ridge board you're going to have a common rafter then the ridge board is actually shortened by the common run on either end. So in a gable roof the ridge board length would be the length of the building plus whatever projection you have. In, in a hip roof it's actually going to be the length of the building minus two times the common run which is minus the width of the building. So the line length of the ridge board is the length of the building minus the width of the building. Now keep in mind this is a theoretical line not an actual length because uh, we're treating all of the pieces of lumber as though they're just a line. Once we add in thickness then we will have to uh, make some adjustments. Here now we've added thickness to our calculations. You can see the ridge this is looking at the top diagram. You can see the ridge line length and you can see that in actuality the ridge has to be lengthened on either end by half the thickness of the common rafter. In a case when you're using inch and a half stock for the common rafter it simply means then that you're adding three quarters of an inch on either end or in effect an inch and a half to the length of the ridge. In a case where there is no common rafter at the end of the ridge you have two hip rafters coming off the side of the ridge board then there will be a, a different adjustment that you'd have to make. But in most cases we're dealing with the tripod hip roof that's on the top of the diagram and that's how we would calculate for the length of the ridge board. This diagram focuses on the end of the roof where you can see again the ridge board being lengthened by half the thickness of the common rafter but you can also see here too that the common rafter is being shortened by half the thickness of the ridge. At the same time you can see the hip rafter which is coming in at a 45 degree angle is going to be shortened by half of the 45 degree thickness of the common rafter. And half of the 45 degree thickness essentially is the diagonal of a 3 quarter by 3 quarter square and that diagonal is 1 and 16 inches. So anytime we're using inch and a half lumber the hip rafter is going to be shortened by one and a sixteenth. Here we have the steps that you're going to take to lay out your hip rafter. We haven't yet calculated the line length but we will go through the steps that you need to take. So the first line you draw at the top of the rafter stock is going to be your ridge plumb cut. And that's going to be where you set your framing square either at let's say it's a 712 roof at 7 and 17 or if you have a speed square you would turn it to that angle to give you seven, a 7 17 angle. So you make your first plumb cut for number one. Number two, you shorten by the thickness, uh, the half the 45 degree thickness of, of the ridge, and that's going to be by inch and a 16. That will give you your second line. And then you back up again by half the thickness of the hip round, and that would be by three quarters of an inch if it's inch and a half stock. Now, what this will do is it'll give you a line, line number three which you can follow with your circular saw set at a 45 degree angle. And if you follow that through and cut right through the lumber, you're going to get the first cheek cut for the hip rafter. You make the same cut on the other side of exactly on the other side of the rafter, and then you would end up with your uh, hip rafter coming to a point. But before you make your cuts, you go to your original mark, which is at the end of the lumber, hook your tape on and measure off the line length of the hip rafter, draw in the heel plumb cut line and from there you'll make your uh, your bird's mouth. Now notice that in order to make the bird's mouth on the hip rafter that you have to pick up uh, the rafter stand from the common rafter for the same roof and use that as your set number above the bird's mouth. So you're actually measuring down instead of measuring up. You then calculate your overhang or your tail length put that on the back end of your lumber and notice again that the end of the rafter is going to be cut to a point similar to the top of the rafter and this is the point at which the two pieces of fascia board will meet on the outside of the roof. A lot of things to remember with the hip rafter.
One more thing to remember that's not on here is the fact that the hip rafter is running at a 45 degree angle and therefore the edges of the hip rafter are actually going to sit a little above the plane of the tops of the common rafters. So we're going to have to either plane that down so that that edge is out of the way or we're going to take the entire rafter and just drop it a little bit so that the edge is perfectly in line in the same plane as the tops of the common rafter. This is another diagram in color this time explaining how to make the cuts for the rafter and you can follow along this carefully. In the middle of the rafter there's a jagged line that just simply represents uh, the cut so that we could fit it onto the page but you'll see exactly the same numbers as you have seen before. When you go to make the angles to cut the, the hip rafter you will either use a framing square where you will set on the tongue of the framing square the unit rise and on the body of the framing square you will set the number 17. You can either hold it in your hands at those positions or use stair gauges to, as a guide to hold your framing square at the exact locations. The other way to do it is to use the speed square and the speed square has a slot in the center. The numbers that are above the slot are there for the hip or valley rafter. So if you were cutting let's say an A12 roof you would pivot uh, your speed square on the end of the wood until the number 8 crosses the top of the rafter stock and that will give you your plumb cut line. Now the neat thing about the speed square is on the long edge of the speed square you can also now read the actual degrees that you will set your miter saw at for cutting the hip rafter. These diagrams show you what happens when you finish cutting the hip rafter. You will either have a single cheek cut or a double cheek cut. In most cases we go with the double cheek cut because we're going to be building tripod hip roofs where we have three common rafters at the end of the ridge board and the hip rafter fitting in between each pair. And so we will have a double cheek cut. In this diagram you have this framing square set again at the unit rise and 17 and you'll be drawing your first or your initial ridge plumb cut line um, denoted here by number two and then you will shorten and your short notice is it's at 90 degrees to the plumb cut line so you will shorten by inch and a sixteenth that inch and a sixteenth is not along the top of the rafter but it's at 90, 90 degrees to the ridge plumb cut line and again it's inch and a sixteenth because our stock is our ridge board is inch and a half And here's another diagram showing you how to make the lines up at the top of the rafter. Notice there's a first ridge plumb cut line, shortened by inch and a sixteenth, that will be the second ridge plumb cut line, and then you shorten again by three quarters of an inch, which is half the thickness of the hip rafter, and that will be your actual cut line that you're going to follow with your circular saw set at 45 degrees. So you tilt the base 45 degrees, you follow that line all the way through which will cut off the end of your lumber and you, you repeat it on the other opposite face of the uh, rafter stock and you will get your rafter, your hip rafter being cut to a point. To get the length of the rafter we can use math or we can set up our framing square like we did with the common rafter except this time the unit rises on the tongue and on the body instead of 12 we'll use 17. So if our building was 20 feet wide, that means our run is equal to 10 feet, which means we have 10 unit runs. So we would simply set our framing square, let's say the slope is 712, we would set the framing square at 7 and 17, and then move our square 10 times, and that will give us the length of the hip rafter. Now we have to be very careful again so we don't accumulate error with each time that we move our square. This diagram shows you how you can use your rafter tables to make your uh, to figure out the lengths for your rafter. So let's go with a 412 roof because that's the part of the framing square we can see. If our the slope of our roof is 412, the framing square tells us on the first line that the length of the common rafter per foot of run is 12.65, and the length of the hip rafter, or hip or valley rafter is 17.44. Now what that means again using simple numbers if our build 20 feet wide the run would be 10 feet and therefore 
the line length of the common rafter would be 12.65 times 10, which would be 126.5, which would be 10 foot 6 and a half inches. In the same way, the length of the hip rafter would be 17.44 times 10, which is 174.4 or 14 feet 6 and 3 eighths inches. There are four other lines here on the framing square tables, which we will discuss in, a, in the next upcoming slides or tables. Let's say we're given a building that's 18 feet by 28 feet, 18 then being the width of the building or the span, um, which will give us a run, half of that of 9 feet. Now, if we're given that the slope of the roof is 4 and 12, we would use the framing square tables. I'm going to use 4 because that's what we can see on the previous slide. The unit common rafter is 12.65 inches, so the line length of the common rafter, we take the 12.65, multiply it by the number of unit runs, which is 9, we get 13.85 or 9 foot 5 and 7 eighths. For the hip rafter, we follow the same pattern, except this time we use line 2, 17.44 times 9, 156.96, which is 13 feet and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Now, when it comes to do the jack rafters, then what we would do to hip jack rafters, we would start with our common rafter and then reduce each time by the common difference. Now, there's two different lines here on the framing square. One is when the common difference is 16 inches. The other one is when the common difference is uh, 24 inches um, for when the rafters are laid out either 16 on center or 24 on center. And so you can see that uh, line 3 gives you 16 and 7 eighths inches for the common difference. So the length of the longest hip jack rafter would simply be 9 foot 5 and 7 eighths minus 1 foot 4 and 7 eighths or 8 foot 1. And then to get the rest of the common raft or jack rafters, we just keep subtracting 16 7 eighths inches. If we lay our rafters out at 24 inches on center, then we would use line 4, which would be 25 and 5 sixteenths. And that's what we would subtract from the common rafter to get the first jack and then we subtract again to get the second jack, and again and again, and so on. Line 5 will give us the side cut of the jack. So at this point, I'm simply going to state what it is. And uh, if you were to hold your framing square at 12 on one side and 11 eighths on the other side, the line that you make on the 12-inch side would actually give you the angle across the top of the lumber, which would give you the side cut for either the jacks as line 5 or in line 6, it would be for the side cut of the hip or the valley rafter. Now these numbers are only important when you're cutting your rafters with a handsaw and you need to see across the top of the lumber exactly where to put your handsaw. If you're cutting with a circular saw, you lay your board down on the flat and you cut across the face simply with your saw, the angle of your saw is set at 45 degrees and you cut straight across the plumb cut line and that will automatically produce that side cut line on the top of the rafter. So we will uh, note line 5 and line 6, but for the most part we'll ignore it. Here we can see the speed square and the framing square being used to lay out the length of the uh, hip rafter. With the speed square, you have to calculate your line length. But the neat part about the speed square is you're able right away to tell what your angle is. With the framing square, you can actually step off the length of the, of the rafter, uh, but you don't know the angle. However, you can use your sliding T-bevel to figure out the angle. So the slot in the speed square has numbers above and below, and the numbers that are above the slot are for the hip rafter, the numbers that are below the slot are for the common rafter and that will help you to, uh, to lay out your rafters. This slide looks at the need that we have to do something with the hip rafter because it runs in at a 45 degree angle. So we have two choices. One is we can take the hip rafter and drop it just a little bit so that the edge, uh, uh, either edge of the hip, hip rafter will actually be in the same plane as the, as the flat tops of the common rafter. Or we can actually take our planes and bevel uh, the top of the hip rafter to get it in exactly the same plane. Either way, it's called dropping the rafter or backing the rafter. And the amounts by which we do this can be found from the framing square 
or from using triangles. So we will proceed on just to show you exactly how you can find exactly how much you drop it or how much you back it. They're not exactly the same number, they're very close. Here's a picture of what happens when you back a hip rafter. You're essentially beveling the back of the hip rafter to allow your sheathing, your, your roof plywood to lie flat in the same plane. Otherwise what would happen is when it comes over the hip rafter it would curl up. Backing the hip rafter allows it to lay flat or you can take the entire hip rafter, lower it just a little bit so that the edge is uh, being caught by the sheathing. So here we have in this diagram using our framing square to figure out exactly how much do we drop it by and how much do we back it by. So if we look at the slightly enlarged picture within the ellipse, you will see that when you hold your framing square, and this is for a 912 roof, when you hold the framing square at 9 and 17, uh, if you go to, from the 17 inch mark back down to the 16 and a quarter inch mark, the vertical distance is 3 eighths of an inch. And that's how much you would actually, on that 3 8 line, is where you would actually be planing or backing uh, the hip rafter. Or if you look at the distance going perpendicular to the body of the framing square, that's actually 7 16 of an inch. And 7 16 is how much you would make your bird's mouth deeper. So in, in effect, what you're doing is you're going to take the bird's mouth of the hip rafter and cutting it a little bit deeper so that the whole rafter can slide down and in this case slide down by 7 16 of an inch. This number will change depending on the slope of the roof but for a hip roof with a 12 slope the amount to drop the rafter is 7 16 the amount to back bevel the hip rafter is 3 8 of an inch. Now these are the roof triangles for a hip roof. You have on the left on the right hand side this is a 7 12 roof so you can see a little triangle with 7 and 12 with the lines on a diagonal going through it. This will give you the unit common rafter, which is 13.89, which you can read off your framing square or you can measure off of a triangle like this. You can also measure the degrees for a, a 7-12 roof and you'll see that the angle is 13.3 degrees. Now if on top of that triangle you were to build another right triangle, this time the base of that right triangle is 13.89, the rise still being 7 inches, then you would get a number that is uh, a little bit longer, 15.55 for the hypotenuse. You would get a different angle, of course, and that angle would be 26.7 degrees. And what that is actually is the, is the plywood bevel angle for when your plywood miters over the top of the hip rafter. Now even though that's the plywood miter angle or the sheathing miter angle, when you go to cut that angle with your circular saw, you will set the degrees on the circular saw at 20.8 degrees. Now where do we get 20.8 from? Well let's go over to the triangles on the left. On the left we have the unit hip rafter triangle. And the base is 17 or 16.97. The rise is still 7 inches. If we were to make that little triangle, we would see that the angle is 22.4 degrees. The hypotenuse is 18.36, which we can read on our framing square. And if we were to make a tiny little triangle that was similar to that triangle, where the base is 3 quarters of an inch, we could actually measure that the hip drop is um, 0.31 or 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now if on top of that triangle we build another triangle that has a of 18.36, uh, 18 again the same rise of 7 inches, then what we're going to get is uh, a hypotenuse this time of 19.65. That will give us a different angle and that angle is 20.8 degrees that's the angle at which we would set our, miter, our, our skill saw at in order to cut uh, our plywood so it miters over the hip. But it's also the angle at which we're going to back uh, the top of the hip rafter. So in order to, to make that little bevel in the top of the hip rafter, that would be the, the amount of degrees. Now how far down from the edge we actually come? Well if we again made a little tiny uh, similar triangle where the, the base of the triangle was uh, three quarters of an inch, then we would find the rise is 0.29 of an inch. So very similar to the hip drop, the backing bevel is just a little bit less. In some cases it's negligible, 
um, but that's the amount by which you would have to play off to make it perfect. On the far right hand side, we have a triangle that will, that will give us um, the, uh, the angle for the sheathing. And again, you notice the base is 12 inches. On the right hand side, it rises up by 13.89, which is the unit common rafter. And again, you notice this time the hypotenuse is still 18.36. So you have two ways to get 18.36. Either put 7 against 16.97, or you put 12 against 13.89. And both ways you're going to get the length, the unit length of the hip rafter. So here's the same two diagrams, this time in color, and the one on the right is in metric. Uh, but you can see how to do these same calculations. If you can uh, enlarge this on your screen, you'll see quite clearly how to uh, how to make these angles. I'm showing this slide again because there are two triangles that I didn't discuss, which are down at the bottom of the picture. And those are the two triangles that are the unit common rafter triangle on the left-hand side. And this is for a 10-12 roof. And on the right-hand side is the unit hip rafter triangle, which has a base of 16.97, but the rise, of course, still being 7 inches. So if we take the full triangle, uh, we will get the angle for the common rafter. And, uh, and then if we were to, from, from the right angle of the triangle, if we were to run straight across so that we hit the hypotenuse perpendicularly, and then arc that distance back down to the vertical part of, of the triangle, we would make another right angle triangle, which would give us a different angle. And that angle, of course, is going to be the sheeting bevel, bevel angle um, for when we make our plywood or, or our boards to fit over the hip rafter. Now, be careful with that angle, because that's the angle that's on the top edge of the board. If you're using a, a circular saw or a miter saw again to make that angle, you would actually set it at your backing bevel angle of 26.9. So on the right-hand side, you do the same thing with your triangle, and uh, as you arc it down, you can get the two different angles that are needed to complete the hip roof. Here we have the layout of the hip jack rafters, and you can see that as they descend from the common and, and they work their way down the hip, that they're being shortened each time by exactly the same amount. If you look at it in plan view and you look at it from the side, the bird's mouth and the tail of a hip jack rafter is going to be identical to the bird's mouth and the tail of the common rafter. The difference is going to be up at the top, it's going to have a compound miter cut. Same plumb line, but the cut will be made with your saw set at 45 degree angle. Here we have the steps for making a hip jack rafter cut, very very similar to making the cut for the hip. The difference being of course we will only have one finished uh, one cheek cut and not it wouldn't come to a point and it will fit up against the hip rafter. The amount we shorten is exactly the same as for the hip rafter. First by inch and a sixteenth and then again by three quarters of an inch. Set our saw at a 45 degree angle and follow the third line there straight across and you will have your hip jack rafter. The actual length of the hip jack rafter you simply take your common rafter and shorten it by the common difference found either on line 3 or line 4 of the rafter tables. Here we can see the jack rafter spacing and the run of the common difference in length. They form the size of a square and are therefore equal to each other. So you can see how that works out and that is why there's an equal common difference for all of them. So step 1 says if the unit rises 6 inches then the unit length is 13.42 if we convert that to 16 inches on center um, and then multiply it by the run, we would get 17.89. And so therefore the common difference is 17 and 7 eighths of an inch for a 612 roof if our hip jack rafters are placed in inches on center. Of course, if they're placed 24 inches on center, then the difference will just be 2 times 13.42. A similar picture this time working from the bottom of the roof and you can see how the hip jack rafter meet together on the hip rafter and support it. And they're supported on the hip rafter. And this is why when you build a hip roof, the hip rafter is usually one size bigger than the other rafters. So for instance, if your common rafters are 2x4, 
your hip rafter will be a 2x6. If the common rafter is a 2x6, the hip rafter will be a 2x8 to carry a little bit of extra weight. Now another way of accomplishing this is also by doubling up hip rafter so that it's double thickness. And in cases where we have a very long hip rafter, um, a, an LVL or a glue laminated, uh, maybe not glue laminated, but I think an LVL or a, an LSL uh, piece of lumber is used. This is the layout for the rafters, starting with the uh, commons. So you can see if you set up your, your roof using your ridge board, nail the commons in place, nail the two commons at the end, you basically have the skeleton of the roof. And then after that, you can come in with the hip rafters uh, coming in from the outside corners and then hanging off of the hip, you can put in the hip jack rafters. And this is the plan for erecting the rafters. So uh, it, it depends, of course, on how the ridge is going to be laid out. In most cases, there is actually a common rafter right at the end of the ridge. In this particular case, there isn't. But you can see that the middle part of the roof is essentially a gable roof. So you can, as long as you have your lengths correct, you can set up your ridge board, build the central part of the roof as a gable roof, and then butting onto that, you can put up your hip, hip rafters and uh, get it into place, get all the rest of the hip jacks into place. These are some photographs of a hip roof that was built off to one side and then located into position after. And it's, this is just there to show you how important it is that everything be done exact and precise. When this roof was first constructed, uh, we were told that the sheathing was going to be OSB that goes on the roof, and then on top of that we were going to put shingles. Uh, but just because we were trying to do everything correctly, we made sure that all of our rafters fitted nice and neat, and everything was good and square. And later we found out that uh, no longer are we going to have uh, OSB on the roof. So what I'm going to show you is how everything fit together and then what the roof ended up looking like. This is where the hip rafter meets uh, the three common rafters right up at the ridge board. You can see the ridge board has been cut to a bevel and also the hip rafter has been cut to a bevel and the rafters are all neatly and tightly fitted together so that everything is in the, in the same plane. This is a picture of the roof looking from a distance. You can see the way it's laid out. Again, the two ends of the roof are, are hip ends. The central part of the roof is essentially just a gable, a gable roof. So all that will be needed for the central part of the roof will be a series of common rafters. This is the roof in its final location. You can see that the central common rafters have been put into place. The two hip ends are all up. Everything is in position on top of the building on which it sits. And this building is actually acting as a breezeway between the building on the left and the open area on the right. So there'll be a sheltered area. <clears throat> this is the building from the inside. Uh, looking up, you can see all of the rafters. You can actually see collar ties, the hip, the hip rafters, the jack rafters. You can see the structure of the building and the way it's been braced. And it's an open area acting as a breezeway between these two buildings. Uh, one is an open building, one is a closed building. After it was constructed, then we were told that in order to keep it brightly lit the way it is right now without any roof sheathing on it, that the decision was made to cover the roof with glass. So here's the completed roof covered with uh, glass. The glass is 15 millimeters thick. And you can see the real importance of making sure that all of your rafters are exactly in the same plane. Wood tends to be a bit forgiving and then it's hidden by shingles. But when you have a glass roof, it's absolutely crucial that everything be in exactly the same plane so that it sits securely on the wood. And that's why it's important that when you have your hip rafter and your ridge actually in this case, that you cut it to a bevel uh, so that uh, everything sits nice and smooth and nice and flat. Now we're going to continue on from here to look at different kinds of roofs and different intersecting roofs. But first, if you go back to the website, you can find uh, the link for our assignment number four. I've done an example for you, and then you complete the other examples that are there.